Johnny Wayne. And also, as uh, me and myself being a part of the ch- uh, Christian church before, what they do is they they don't want you to ask questions. Amen. Don't ask no questions. Don't ask. I come up. Uh, uh, why come the pastor have to have him a nice house? Uh, why come the uh, uh, pastor have to have a nice car? Uh, don't ask. I said, don't ask. I said, don't ask. No questions, just give the money. Money! Come in! To me! Now! Money! Come in! To me! Now! Money! Woo! Get some anointing! You put some of me up! Woo! Put this anointing on it! I'll put this anointing on it! I'll tell you what, you put some up here! I'm putting... Put this anointing on this money, man. Woo! Put some money. Put some anointing on this money. You put something up here. You put... Woo! Prosper. Prosper, I said. Prosper. Give them the money, Lord. Send it to them. Glory to God. I place my anointing on this money. Your bills are paid. Turn from these churches. Remove your foot from these houses of Satan. For these men are corrupt. They teach damnable heresy for filthy lucre's sake. Isaiah, chapter 3, verses 12. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. O my people, they which lead thee cause thee to error, and destroy the way of thy paths. The women have become the rulers, and the children are oppressing, uh, oppressing us. How are our children oppressing us? First, our children are out here robbing the older folks. You know, when's the last time you seen a teenager help a woman across an old, you know, elderly lady across the street with some bags? I haven't seen that in like I don't know how long. Just living here in, in the hood, you know what I'm saying? This, this is this is where I'm from, and there's no respect. They curse you out. Um, they're not learning anything because they're being taught. I mean, you have babies having babies. And they don't respect their parents. I have seen kids beating their parents, you know, rob the store. And, and these are young kids, 12, 13 year old kids. <laughs> Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them along. And there shall be no might in thy hand. Them. How can foreigners come to the United States and adopt our children so easily? Ann Kavanaugh joins us with more on a story with a special report on the forgotten children. 
The United States has become one of the most popular countries for Canadians interested in foreign adoption. Judy and Martin Pitcher adopted two-and-a-half-year-old Landon from an agency in Oak Park when he was less than a week old. We just couldn't believe that it was so easy to adopt an African-American child from the United States. Many say too easy. We don't have any national criteria for who can adopt our kids outside the U.S. We don't even keep track of how many babies are leaving. We don't know who's being taken out. We don't know how many kids, and we don't know where they're going. Pop star Madonna's contested adoption of a one-year-old boy from Malawi has made headlines. In the U.S., the number of whites adopting black children is growing. A 1994 federal law now forbids racial discrimination in their placement. A rising number of those adopting are gay and lesbian, and not everyone in the black community is pleased. You kind of have a blank slate, and they walk in the door, and we can say, this is what we need. These are the kids we have. Would you, could you? And, and they say yes. Now, the United States is a land of plenty. The world's richest country in absolute terms, but it has one of the worst infrastructures in the developed world, over six deaths per thousand births. That statistic is double for black Americans, who suffer more than 13 infant deaths per 1,000 births. <laughs> From 1973 to 2004, nearly 30% of the so-called African-American population were raised through abortions. And out of the average, 4,400, sorry, 4,400 babies dying daily that are reported abortions. It is an estimate 1,000. 300 of so called African Americans. So this goes way back, and it's the same people with all the exceptional states in the United from that day to this day, it's still the same number to kill off the Hebrew baby. And um, they, just, they just make it more high tension. Why couldn't they just let me be? Let me be, let me be, let me be. Adoption experts here say our forgotten children are African American. The role of a woman is to be a helper to her husband. That's the original reason that we were created um, from um, Adam's rib, if you will. So we're supposed to be there for our husbands, whatever he needs us to do. If that's cooking his meals, if that's cleaning uh, the house, if that's taking care of the children, um, he's supposed to be able to trust in us. The wooden lynch letter affects the minds of our uh, Hebrew women. Well, first, the role reversals were switched. Um, through slavery, when you read, if you have read the uh, wooden lynch letter, you will see that they took our Hebrew men and made them weak in our faces. They made them weak in our faces. The role reversal has done great numbers to our people. It has brought us down to an all-time low because if you don't know your role as men and women, then how is the society is going to work? How is the house going to stand if you don't know if you don't know the positions or the role in which you're supposed to play? Now, by the women not knowing our roles, it has made everything that much worse for the Hebrew people. Feminism is taking away or subtracting from the male role. Feminism is taking over the male role. Feminism is reforming things so that the male is no longer needed. Feminism is little boys seeing strong women and want to be their sons are looking at their mother as this authority figure because he does not have a father around whereas 
the daughters are looking and this is how I'm supposed to be. So when a son is finally put in that situation, when he has a family, he doesn't know how to be a father. We're raising um, a, a nation, if you will, a, a, a period in, in our life where the, produ the producing part of a family uh, will be largely female as opposed to male. And that has a uh, tremendous implication, I think, for, for as an American family. Five-year period, the number of businesses owned by black women jumped 75 percent compared to 29 percent for black men. And so it's no wonder that of $850 billion of spending power in the African-American community, today, black women control 62 percent of that. There's another interesting statistic, 70 percent of... This is, I know, all the black women, hold on to your seats right now. <laughs> all the black women, hold on, take a breath. 70% of African-American women are single. The so-called African-American and Latino leadership is destroying our way to Yah. They stand in the way of our true salvation. They teach us to worship the gods of our slave masters, Islam and Christianity. They teach us we are everything other than the people of the covenant, the descendants of the prophets. They tell you to be pro-black, and at the same time you have become more and more anti-Yah. They say the Bible is the white man's book, but this is the only book that speaks about your true history and heritage. For us expecting any positive change from them, this, is, this ties in even more to the significance of us not understanding who we truly are. Because the scripture tells you, Israel, that your leaders are greedy dogs and nothing's but see, since we don't understand that we're Israelites, we don't understand that this is talking to us. Never elect our own leaders. It's like they're given to us. They basically just give us our leaders. You know, we got black mayors, we got black aldermen, we got black you know, in all levels of government. But it seems they...